99 Dreamland, never county, nowhere. That's what I wrote the day my eldest was born. 99 Dreamland, never county, nowhere. <laughs> On a tiny scrap of paper. That's what I would say to myself. That was me address. People don't daydream anymore, do they? Too busy looking at phones or on laptops or wondering what them over there are doing. I was a right dolly daydream. Still am. I've won the sweepstakes a thousand times in my mind. Oh, that's the lotto to you young ones at the back there. <laughs> I've won the lotto too. Yeah. I'd go dropping little envelopes of money into people who touched me life. Me friends. Like, I'd have a little map in my mind's eye of their houses. And in the envelopes would go. Yeah. I've closed my eyes and saw me and the kids in a different house. On a different street. In a different life. Blocked it all out at times. Staring out windows. Watching the colours, the flickers of colour in granite walls. As I set my imagination off. to daydream, a reverie indulged in while awake. I looked it up, <laughs> that's what it's described as, a reverie. Isn't that lovely word? Reverie. Indulged in while awake, well, makes it sound like a hobby. But for me, it wasn't a hobby. It was a, a necessity in a way. I suppose a way and a way of saving myself. Yeah, that's what it was. A way of saving myself. Like, I was protecting this little bit inside myself. Letting nobody get it. Yeah. And it keeps you going, doesn't it? Well, it has kept me going. I think it worked. Well, it has worked on my standing here talking to you. But you try not to dwell on things, don't you? You just, you keep going, that's what we do. No, it's lovely to be here with the theatre. I like to go, but don't get to go much. It's expensive, you know. Now, I don't mean to be going on about that. We all know money's tight. But you know, if I invite someone to go to the theatre with me, I like to get their ticket too. And so then that's two tickets. It's a lot. So sure no one has the money for that. <laughs> Bar them at the top, that is. <laughs> them at the top. No. You know, I met a man once. 75 years of age. Never been to the theatre. Never. Never went. Never had the opportunity. <coughs> Never went. He said to me, Ah. They're not places I'd go to. Sad that, isn't it? To think in a way. And look, he didn't exactly say this, but it was like he felt he wasn't good enough to go to the theatre. That, ah no, those places wouldn't be for the likes of me. People think no one feels like that anymore. But they do. I know loads of people who feel like that. I do. Ah, wouldn't go into the theatre. Nah, nah, wouldn't like that. Wouldn't go in there. They would love it. Why wouldn't they go in there? Imagine to get taken away in your mind. Listen to someone else's story. 
get transported somewhere else. Who wouldn't want that? Close your eyes and oh, listen to someone else speak. Who wouldn't want that? I don't know. You know, just to escape for a while. I saw Swan Lake once. Have any of you seen that? No, the Swan Lake? No? Oh, I loved it. It was so beautiful. And, you know, sometimes when I need an escape, like, oh, that's what it is. It's an escape, not an indulgence. The daydream, it's an escape. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes when I need me escape, I think of that Swan Lake. Did you hear something there? Did, did Danny hear something? No? Oh God, sorry. I think I'm hearing things. I, I, I thought it was himself. I just... Yeah, where was I now? Um... Oh yeah, Swan Lake. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I uh, saw a little bit of myself in Odette. Well, she was the one who was turned into a swan by this evil one. And like, she could only be come really our real self when she was on her own. You know, at night, she'd become her human self. Yeah, I love that. Swan Lake. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think that's why I wanted to do this, you know? Bring the theatre to the people. You know? Open it up. <laughs> Make it inclusive. It's all about that now, isn't it? Make it inclusive. <laughs> People didn't think about that when they stuck me out here, eh? The corporation. <laughs> I wanted to live where I was from. Be part of my own community. But they put me out the far side of the sea. I'm sure people couldn't even visit. Especially years ago when they didn't have phones or cars. That seems mad now, doesn't it? But you know, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It wasn't that long ago. You know, things are going to change around here. They are going to change. Whew. Well. Anyway, it's good to stretch yourself, isn't it? It's good to think of these things and all. Jesus, what was that? Did you hear that? Oh, it's bloody neighbours again. Oh my God, you know, you can hear everything in these houses. I swear to God, I swear, I actually think they're going to come through the wall at any minute. My nerves. When they're watching the telly, it's like I'm watching the same programme as them. I might as well, like, if I'm watching the same programme as them, I can hear it in stereo. I know sometimes what I'm thinking. Yeah, lost. Yeah. <sighs> you know. I told the council when they put me out here. I didn't want to go. That I need my family. You need your family when you're rare kids, don't you? You want to be like in your own community, around where you're from. You didn't listen. <laughs> I should have been more vocal. I done a self-assurance course, you see, recently, and I'm feeling, well, I suppose I'm feeling more self-assured now. It's good, that, isn't it? But I said to them I didn't want to come. I wanted to be around my family. I wanted them to help me rear my kids, you know? Because you need family. Like, say my sister's husband's sister was up at the shops and she saw my kids hanging around there. And she said, uh, what are you doing up here? Aren't you so-and-so's kids? Get back home. People did that for each other, didn't they? 
They watched out for each other. I didn't have anyone to do that here. Now there is a community here and I have brilliant friends, I do, and I love them all. But there was no one here to tell them to go home. You know? Himself was out. He wouldn't be looking for them. <laughs> they wouldn't be on the green plane where I told them to anyway. They come in all innocent. People say to me, how did you let that happen? How? How? I love my kids. Every one of them. I love them. Try to keep them in. Try to protect them. Sure, you'd lock them up if you could. I know people who've done that. They've literally locked them in. It doesn't work. That's why when I see someone struggling, on the streets or with the drugs. I think, I think they were a little baby once. A little baby, full of innocence and cheer. And there was an excitement about their future. This little baby, this little life, They just didn't get lucky. They didn't get the luck. I know some of them have done terrible things. Violent crime and all. I know that. But I still try and keep me empathy with them. Because when that goes, sure, we've got nothing. I don't know what we're going to do about this housing crisis. I don't. I mean, they say it's going to work itself out, but they don't have their kids sleeping on their floors or trying to get a bed in hostels, trying to get on a housing list. People don't know that. You have to physically stay in these places to stay on the list. You have to check into these places every night. Places that people have been beat up in. Places that are pushing drugs every minute. That's hard. Kids trying to give up stuff and they're faced with that every night. So who wouldn't want to take it? I'd take it. Who wouldn't want to be out of their head in one of those places? I don't know. I suppose daydreaming is my drug. <laughs> or the theatre. That's me escape. <laughs> like when I saw the Swan Lake. Like I haven't seen much dance, but it was so beautiful. It was like they were on wires, they were so light. They were literally soaring through the air. And when I came home from the show that night, and he started roaring, I was right back up there on that stage in my mind. I flew out of my seat and I started to dance. And the more he roared, the more I danced. I was as light as a feather. <coughs> and when his fist started coming, the faster I danced. I was right there on that stage. I wasn't in his kitchen with the broken plates and the screaming and me blood on the kitchen counter. I was on that stage. I was soaring through the air, spinning on me tippy toes. I was free, freer than I've ever been. Soaring through that air, through that theater. Because I was the real me. You know, the person we hide down there, the person deep inside yourself. The person that holds all the dreams and the hopes. Yeah. 
And do you know what? For that one moment, I could actually breathe. Proper, real breaths. Probably for the first time. And that's when I decided things are going to change around here. They're going to change. The kids are around the corner. Packed us back. I'm not doing this anymore. This is the last time. Because I'm a dancer. In my mind. Anyway. That's him. You don't have to worry about me. I'll always have me daydreams. I will be all right.